Thank you today for your time uh, and congratulate you on your receiving your award, the uh, Padma Bhushan. I want to congratulate you on that. Thank you so much. And to start off simple, my first question is, why exactly was marketing, why did you pursue marketing? Everything I've done has been accidental. Accidental. Okay. Absolutely. And uh, it's fascinating. I do believe that accidentally engaging into an activity actually is more meaningful, more motivational in some fashion. Yeah. I was trained as an accountant in India. Okay. My degree was in accounting, history and statistics mm -hmm. and my major was income tax. Okay. I did not want to be a child accountant or CPA as we call yeah. it because uh, in India there's a typical stereotype, Jains, Gujaratis or Marwari or mm -hmm. Rajasthani, we all go into professional accounting, yes. sometimes legal. Uh, so I came to America mm -hmm. and suddenly I discovered psychology more exciting to me. Psychology, what okay. motivates people? So I should have gone technically into management field, mm -hmm. leadership, you know, and all that stuff, yeah. HR, human resource. But by sheer accident, I went into marketing. Okay. The marketing professor liked me, I liked him. I raised a question and mm -hmm. then he said, come and work with me. So I, instead of studying the psychology of employees, yes. I began to study the psychology of consumers. Okay. Uh, so, I talked about marketing, I would like to ask you about your yes. current profession at Emory University. Right. Uh, as the teacher, a professor of marketing at Emory University since 1991, yes. I would like to ask, over over time, since about, about three decades, yeah. how has the content changed over time? Content has changed in three very important directions. First major content over 30 years, years or three decades mm -hmm. is that the world has globalized a lot more than ever before. Yes, it's true. More and more corporations are becoming multinationals. Mm -hmm. So you have choices of brands in your country that you never imagined would be possible, yes. foreign brands. And similarly the opposite where our brands travel all over the world. Especially McDonald's is everywhere. Yes, Starbucks is everywhere. True, yes. If you think about our brands, right? Yeah. And similarly, Japanese brands are all here in automobiles, for example. Yes. Korean brands, you know, LG and Samsung are here mm -hmm. in terms of appliances. Yes. <clears throat> so globalization has been a very key additional content that you have to accommodate. Yeah. Most of the American marketing is primarily North America centric or US centric. Yeah. So now we are trying to make sure that there is a supplement material or have a book that basically talks about more globalization. Okay, globalization. Globalization of competition and globalization of brands. Okay. So when you create a brand, how does it manage different cultures in the world? Because brands have different colors, mm -hmm. different words. Yes. They mean they may mean one thing in one country or the other. Yes. So globalization is really one dimension. The second dimension is really changing demographics of this country. This nation is aging and aging much faster than any demographer mm -hmm. explained. Yes. And therefore the new industries are coming along because when you age, two things is very important in terms of needs of the society mm -hmm. is health preservation and wealth preservation. Okay. So those industries will take a larger chunk of the GDP of the economy yes. than other industries. Right? Mm -hmm. So more and more with aging of the population and other demographics, which I will talk about, services and industries are growing quite a lot. Yes. Second major demographic that I study is uh, working women households. Okay. In my generation, one spouse would be the homemaker, other mm -hmm. would be the breadwinner. Yes. Clear division of work. Mm -hmm. Today, two spouses both have to work. Yes. Not want to work, but have to work. Yes. You cannot survive in a large city with a single egg income. Yes. So now when the spouses both work, what happens to time? Monday through Friday, who is at home? Nobody. Answer is nobody, right? Nobody, yes. It turns out to be dog is there. <laughs> yeah. no, that's the only one dog or a pet, right? Yeah. That's, that's kind of a joke. So all the service providers cannot say, I will come to your home this day, wait for me. Mm -hmm. You have to make exact appointment because you are taking time out from work to come be at home. Mm -hmm. Like appliances people, cable people, yes. you know, to repair, whatever they do. Yeah. And everybody needs help. 
when dual income, so there's a time shift and time shortage. So time shift is doing things before nine o'clock, doing things after nine o'clock for all service providers. Mm -hmm. And uh, weekends are more up possibilities. And there's a time shortage itself. By and by. So the economy is, 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 is driven more by time scarcity than money scarcity. So you see all the home services coming in now. Mm -hmm. You now can order a meal and that comes at home. Comes Pizza home. people can deliver at home because they have yes. no time to go out. Yeah. So your home becomes your castle. Yeah. Everybody comes to the yeah. house now yeah. for the new going out, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't have the time. Yes. And so that's the, that's the second demographic I've studied quite a lot. Okay. The third one really is, especially in the US, the change in the ethnic mix. Ethnic mix. Today, minorities combined together are equal to majority. California, the largest state, is already non-white majority. Yes. Second largest state is Texas, that will become non-white majority this year or next year. Mm -hmm. It impacts elections, but it also impacts consumption in the markets. Yes. Third largest state out of nowhere will not be New York or Pennsylvania as it used to be, mm -hmm. but it turns out to be Florida, Florida. Yeah. which will be non-white majority also. Mm -hmm. So in elections, which are coming up in 2020, yes. these three states will be battleground especially Texas, which has been Republican, but with the changing of the demographics, does it change? Mm -hmm. Like San Antonio is more than 50% Hispanic population, mm -hmm. the whole city, Yes, which is incredible to think about in this country, yeah, right? country yeah. and Florida the same way. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. so all the ethnic populations are concentrating. Mm -hmm. So that I study that, that's okay. clearly second dimension. Okay. The third dimension, probably most disruptive in terms of education, what we thought versus what we have to teach now, mm -hmm. surprisingly turns out to be um, technology. Technology, yes. Remember, all these companies we know, like Google, Apple, mm -hmm. Apple is slightly different, but uh, all of them are really new century yes, new century companies. companies, exactly. Yes. Facebook. Mm -hmm. yes. They have massive impact on society. All social media. Social media, exactly yes. right. So given that, and I find fascinating, it's so disruptive and it impacts marketing first because people now want to shop online first. They would yeah. like to go to online and get, gather information before they go to the store. Mm -hmm. So digital first yes. and physical second yeah. used to be the other way around, you know, yeah. so that's the change. So those are the three things that we teach now, incorporate and change the curriculum accordingly. Okay. Long answer. But I wanted yeah. to explain in more detail mm -hmm. significant change we have made over three decades. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, so my next question has to do with you being a published author, yes. having written several, uh, you know, I saw over 350 research paper and books. Um, what inspired you to start your career in writing? You know, all artists, whether you are a painter or an author or a sculptor, uh, you get excited about what you want to learn. Yes. It's not that you are an expert for you to learn more. Yes. So we say, okay, I'll take that project mm -hmm. and see if the project I'm taking is significant enough to require a book or an article mm -hmm. to make the decision. Yes. And then you begin to deep dive into that subject as a learner primarily. Curiosity. I've always said, exactly, curiosity. Yeah. Now, I've always said that the best way to learn is to teach mm -hmm. or do research. Do research but teaching yes. is a great powerful mechanism for your learning essentially. Yeah. So I get excited about different topics. Okay. Now there are some scholars in all disciplines who stay in one discipline all their life, 40, 50 years, and yes. they just contribute more and more. Then there are others who are more eclectic. Okay. I'm in the second category. So I get satiated or bored after what I've learned. Yeah. So I want to learn something new, yeah. and I move on. So, and sometimes it's good, sometimes not good from a scholarship viewpoint, but my view is that it's my enjoyment more yeah, so than my exactly yeah. so that's why i changed the topics yeah. Yeah. uh so i looked into your um uh, one yeah. of the books uh chimney arising right. which you wrote uh 2008 uh i'm curious about even with the large rather large populations in the countries and uh such as and then environmental you know yes. downsides such as pollution how what exactly is the key for them so Excellent question, by the way, because neither the technology nor the capital will slow down the growth of China and India. Yes. What will slow down will be the environment. Mm -hmm. 
You know, nature is biological science. Yes. Even coal is made biologically. Yeah. Iron is made biologically. We don't think about that one. So in the first industrial revolution, we probably over-exploited the natural resources that nature was able to produce. Yes. And in the process, we have created our own environmental issues. Mm -hmm. Environment cannot generate enough capacity to sustain the growth of China and India. Yeah. We said that one has to become, how do I nurture nature so it reproduces enough in time mm -hmm. so that I can have longer life, longer sustainability, life. Yes. sustainability. Yes. And so my view is that actually countries that will lead toward the environmental issues will be emerging economies. Emerging economies. Okay. China is leading the world right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are going to make all vehicles electric. Yes. I mean, we will be much likely, a lot longer in America do the, to do that thing because we have such a large installed capital and companies involved. Mm -hmm. So the transformation will be too disruptive. Too disruptive, that's true. Whereas China has still a starting market in many ways. Mm -hmm. They are getting into solar technology. Yes. India is very big in solar. Yeah, I've seen a lot of that. In fact, uh, I think India may even have the largest megawatt just built recently, okay. solar farms. Mm -hmm. And India has fortunately 10 months of sunshine, most places, yes, most places. two months of monsoon. Mm -hmm. So they can do that. So I think shifting to renewable resources is one. Mm -hmm. But environmental issues cannot be managed by market freedom, market process. Yes. Market fails in this area quite often. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is to create some laws and rules and regulations mm -hmm. mandatory. Yes. Just like smoking, we have done. Mm -hmm. You couldn't stop smoking by advertising, promoting. No. Uh, but people finally said, we will restrict where you can where smoke. You smoke. Yeah. So you can't smoke in air airplanes anymore, mm -hmm. office buildings anymore, airports anymore, for yes. example. Make everything smoke free, hoping that will reduce the reduce consumption, demarketing as we call yes. it. So I think the environment is a very key, key factor. Key factor. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, on continuing with books, I also saw that you wrote a book that had to do with the theory of buyer behavior. Yes. Uh, so, my question is, what, first of all, led you to think of this theory? And then, also, how, how can companies understand this? How would that, how would that help them? Very, that's, again, a very good question. Thank you. The, in economics, the belief system is that consumers make choices. Mm -hmm. You give them two, three options, they compare them, you know, yes. pros and cons, yeah. positive, negative, strength and weaknesses, and say, based upon all that analysis, I'll make a decision. A decision. My view is that consumers actually reduce choices, they don't make choices. Reduce choices. Consumers like to be habituated. Mm -hmm. They like to become loyal to a brand. Loyal to a brand, that's true. Uh, because every time you think about all this work and go to the shop, etc., cost of doing transaction is very high. Mm -hmm. There's a whole transaction economics, uh, transaction cost theory in economics. Yes. In fact, the gentleman has got the Nobel Prize for that, you know, for oh. two, two people. Okay. So I took the opposite view. Mm -hmm. That if consumers like to reduce choices among this, the more choices you offer in a capitalistic country, yes the more the consumers will urge to reduce it down to something that they enjoy, they're satisfied, they're happy. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, it's a learning model. Okay. So basically I said, how do you through learning experiences reduce choices? Mm -hmm. And ultimately you become habituated. Let me answer in a slightly different way. We are so habituated you don't realize. So I try to analyze myself as a consumer now, right? Yes. Nowadays, I go to my supermarket through the same entrance, even though there are 20 different entrances in the shopping center. Yes. I drive the same way, looking for my favorite parking spot. Mm -hmm. If some other car is parked, I get upset. Yes. It's like my reserve space forever, right? Mm -hmm. I walk into the supermarket the same way, same way. You can put my footprint and you will see it's repeated the same way. Yeah. That's the habit. And habit is very useful concept. We think habit is negative. No. We think because habit, we don't want to learn anything new. I think that's a wrong con concept. Mm -hmm. So we, we, habit is very efficient. With more habitual behavior, routine, yeah. we get up in the morning properly, we brush our teeth, we mm -hmm. shower, whatever we do. I think it's habit becomes more efficiency. More efficiency. And humans have a nature to increase more efficiency so they can yeah. do other things, either mm -hmm. leisure or do more work or do more reading, yes. whatever they do. So that changed the whole paradigm. Okay. 
And they came up with a theory called theory of, or psychology of simplification. Okay. Too many choices, too many criteria. I want to buy the house, I want to buy the car, mm -hmm. I want to buy a cell phone. Yeah. Now which one do I choose? You simplify the process for learning and psychology of simplification. Okay. Now here is the interesting part. After I'm habituated, I have the urge to change. Urge to change, yes. <laughs> you get bored. And you get bored, exactly. Yes. So boredom comes in satiation, so I go out of my way to complicate my life. Yeah. So we call psychology of complication. Okay. And in the process, incumbent brand names that I'm loyal to mm -hmm. are disrupted. Because yes. I'm searching for newer things, newer right? Things, newer Change brands. of pace, you know, novelty, variety seeking, whatever yes. it is. So there's a whole cycle about simplifying and then complicating, simplifying and complicating. Keep repeating itself. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That, so the theory became very popular because it was so different for its time. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. By the way, I do want to mention it was published in 1969. Yeah, I saw that. We just had a 50th edition, a reprinted oh, okay. in the 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So the publisher was very willing to reprint or republish yes. it again. Uh, I think in January they came out with a new edition. Uh, so from your books uh, and research papers, you've received plenty of awards uh, and recognitions for these. And I was just wondering if, if there was a specific award that, or maybe two, that meant the most to you and why? Uh, the two awards more meaningful than others. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe three, technically. Okay. One is the Padma Bhushan. Yes. I had no idea how meaningful that award is to others. Yes, to others. I had no idea. Uh, the number of emails I've got, okay. the number of uh, LinkedIn <laughs> messages, yeah. I just always was blown. In fact, I was more humbled by all those reactions by people after the award was announced. Okay. It has become more meaningful after the announcement after the than announcement. seeking or you know, nominating, nominating for the award. Yes. I, that was just, and it has come from all kinds of people. My professional academic side, mm -hmm. but our Jain community. Jain community, yes. We come from Gujarat, uh, Kach, so Kachi community, you know. Mm -hmm. It just goes on and on. Everybody wants to celebrate this. Yes. To me, having that positive impact on other people making others inspired. Yes, inspired. And I've always believed if I can do it, anybody can do mm -hmm. it. And I'm being honest about that. So given that, it becomes inspiring to somebody. Somebody watches that and say, wow, I can do it too. Yes. And to me, that'll be the best impact one That's can good. make. Yes, so to that, that award has a more impact on society, not just on me. Yeah. Well, the second most meaningful award has been the honorary doctorate from University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign mm -hmm. campus. I taught there for 15 years. Mm -hmm. yes. And very meaningful in terms of my own growth. They gave me all the opportunities to be not only a teacher or a professor of mm -hmm. research, but also an administrator. Administrator. Policy committees, as well as managing faculty, departments, budgets, etc. Yes. And my maturity just went up. Well, okay. And to me, they invested in me quite a lot. And I'm so grateful for that campus. And when the nomination came and the honorary doctorate was given, mm -hmm. it's a very respected campus, as you know. And in engineering, it ranks always among the top yes, four, five. That's very true. Computer science number number one, number two, almost. Mm -hmm. And given that they were willing to give award, recognized by giving honorary doctorate, it was very meaningful. Okay. The third one has been my own discipline marketing. Now, I've been very blessed to win all the four major awards. Mm -hmm. uh, there are four listed yes, in the four websites. Things. I don't want to repeat all of them. Yeah. Uh, but it also says that anybody, even somebody who is an immigrant to the country, mm -hmm. if you do a good research, good impact on that marketing society, marketing society. Uh, they are willing to recognize you. It again becomes a role model to other people of Indian inspires, origin. Inspires them exactly. that they can also do it. Yes. And it has happened, fortunately. Okay. So to me, it's again more meaningful, especially mm -hmm. in the third and the first, where impact is in the society itself, yes. not just on me. Okay. Uh, so earlier I asked about the you know changes in marketing education, which yeah. you've seen. Now I'd like to ask, rather than education itself, what changes what have there been maybe in the industry itself, and then what changes do you see coming in the near future? 
the biggest change in the industry across industries except the silicon valley companies mm -hmm. is lack of growth that's because aging population consumes less yes. traditional products especially yeah. they're empty nesters they're just two people maybe a dog or a pet of some sort yes so there's a deconsumption and economy needs growth for its own survival yeah that's very true you know job opportunities mm -hmm. and better standard of living yes and the big worry is that among all advanced countries the economies are not growing other than one percent one and a half percent mm -hmm. Japan is actually growing nothing, zero. Yeah. Germany is growing very slowly. Yeah. Now, we always prided on more growth because we are more capitalistic, we allow more opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, we seed new industries through government research contracts, yes. you know, other stuff. But even here, the growth is not what we want, like 3 to 4 percent. Yeah, it's only 1, 1 and a half percent, maybe 2 percent. Right? Yeah, so high. one key problem with industry is lack of growth. Lack of growth. If you have a lack of growth, immediately the way you manage to show some growth is acquisitions and mergers. Mm -hmm. No organic growth, so you begin to buy out companies. Yes. So Morgan Stanley just announced they will buy E-Trade, for example. Okay. Similarly, in financial industries, they're buying each other out. Buying each other in out. healthcare, they're buying each other out. Yes. If you just read any business newspaper or magazine like Wall Street Journal, every day there's a major merger and acquisition. Merger, yes. The second thing is that now you see the rise of what we call private equity people or private capital. Yes. Even the largest of the companies actually are acquired by not the stock market nor the debt people but private equity people. Mm -hmm. So these are companies like Goldman Sachs in the old days but now would be more like Blackstone. Blackstone. They have the um, so Blackstone has seven trillion dollars of money okay. and it's so large mm -hmm. that they can buy any size company. Yes, hundred company. billion dollar valuation they have the Financial very yeah, have to money, do that yes. kind of So that's the one key. The second major factor is the impact of digital technology, yeah. not just in the technology world, but the whole corporation. Mm -hmm. To me, technology is like breathing air, it's everywhere. Everywhere, yes, nowadays. And if you don't have air, you suffocate. Yeah. So it's the so, so backbone of a company today is no longer their engineering capability mm -hmm. in making products technology. or service excellence with technology. Yeah. Exactly. And so everybody's going through a digital transformation. Mm -hmm. Anything that's manual, how to be automated. Yeah. Anything that's a paper pencil, how can we record it, you know, digital mm -hmm. storage wise. Yeah, make things more efficient. Mm -hmm. Making more efficient. Yeah. So archiving the data, data mining just goes on and on. Mm -hmm. That is a second major shift mm -hmm. in the industry. Do you see that as a positive or a negative? Very good point. Uh, people have always debated about the automation. Yes. If you look at the history of industrial revolution, which was the first wave of automation, mm -hmm. we are like industry.4 or 4.0, we call it now fourth okay. generation. You find that it has not affected jobs at all mm -hmm. when you analyze the data. Yeah, analyze the data. More importantly, through automation, we have made the human life more precious. Yes. We think it will be replaced, right? Mm -hmm. But hardest work has been in agriculture sector. Yes. Where you are illiterate, education is not needed, but you work day and night because you live in a dormitory there, all you get your is sleeping accommodation and some wages. Yeah. Which again the landlord will you know, the landowner will keep it himself. Yes. Very tough job. Mm -hmm. Now with industrialization and manufacturing the workers' life become easier. Easier, so they can compensate Exactly. That. Now, from manufacturing, we are going to our services economy, mm -hmm. which means we sit in an air-conditioned office. Yes. Much harder, much less hard than the other previous, right? Yeah. So that is becoming very fascinating that we are able to improve the quality of life and the wages go up. What you earn in agricultural sector is the lowest. Lowest, yes. Second one is in the manufacturing sector, the industrial. Mm -hmm. Next one is in the services, clerical services and then professional services. Okay. The highest wages are by people who are in professional certified services, like yes. doctors, lawyers, mm -hmm. or professors, or whoever they are, yeah. for hourly wages are higher. So with more automation and more even AI, artificial intelligence, AI, yes. make it automation intelligent, essentially smart, mm -hmm. uh, I see the wages going up. Wages going up, okay. Rather than coming down. Because uh, you're saying because of the amount of work? And then people will now learn newer skill sets. Learn newer skills, more skills. Exactly. Yeah, okay.
All right, uh, another book you wrote, Sustainability Edge. Yes. Uh, companies have to have sustainability in order to run properly. Right. So, wh um, why do you feel like that's the, like very important to have that? Yeah. Sustainability Edge will become quite important mm -hmm. because it is the next frontier for competitive advantage. The last frontier with which we all did very well was to embrace quality standards. Japan led the way. Mm -hmm. For them to export their products, which are low quality, inferior, like made in China image, made, China, yes. made in China and made in Japan image was very negative. People used to laugh them. Yeah. Nation took a stand, invited an American statistician, uh, Edward Deming was his name, okay. to bring him there and teach them how to do quality assurance on products, how to measure and how to make sure you make sure only quality products come out. Products. And Japan became best brand in the world. All Japanese brands Just from the, Sony. The quality of them. Absolute yeah. quality of them. Mm -hmm. So even Germans were amazed that Japanese could make such high quality products. Yes. Right? I think that was the competitive advantage of Japan as a nation. They conquered many industries. Mm -hmm. It followed by it was followed by South Korea. Okay. Samsung brand, you yes, know. Samsung. Uh, the LG brand, they just dominated the world. Now it is the Chinese brands. Chinese brands, yes. Chinese can make products at any quality, quality. low quality, medium, or premium quality. Mm -hmm. And their brands are rising, like Lenovo is their brand, mm -hmm. for example, yes. higher in appliances. Yes. I can go on Alibaba, you know, yes. payment yes. systems, and yeah. just goes on and on, right? Mm -hmm. So, given all that, I think the key change around here is the quality assurance movement, right? Okay. Transform the industry. Now it is sustainability. Okay, makes sense. Uh, so aside from, you know, just your work life and your achievements, I'd like to ask you just, you know, more, I guess, you know, personal things about your sure. childhood, for example. Yeah. Was there, you know, any childhood memories or people in your childhood that maybe impacted you on who you are today and what you've done? Yeah. Uh, I have several childhood memories because I'm a refugee from Myanmar or Burma in my okay. days. Yes. Uh, we barely escaped the Japanese uh, conquest mm -hmm. and uh, we suffered quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So lots of early childhood memories are about struggle. Struggle. Okay. You know, no milk, no sugar, mm -hmm. no kerosene. Yeah. We did not have electricity anyhow in those days. Mm -hmm. And you have certain key memories about very mundane things today would be so enjoyable. Yeah. Like a treat. Tree, yeah. You know, any experience, so mm -hmm. you remember those. Yeah, something small. Like that. Then we try to settle in different parts of India, okay. from uh, Bombay to Baroda, which yeah. is Balodra now, but ultimately Chennai. Chennai, Chennai is definitely a different country culture in India. Okay. It's almost like for us as Northern Indians, it'll be like a Swedish person try to settle in Sicily. Yeah. In Europe, that's very diverse very, cultures, yeah, right? Very different. So you begin to understand different cultures and you begin to have memorable incidents in the process. Mm -hmm. Certain things you say, wow, first time I started thinking in English, because I had no choice. Yeah. I had to study English primarily as my medium mm -hmm. in high school. So I think that has been very important. Okay. So there are many, many memories. I mean, it depends upon the questions you ask. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you some crazy memories. When I came to America, I had no idea what Western world is all about. No idea, yeah. So I go to the supermarket and the door opens. Mm -hmm. And I said, who opened the door for me? <laughs> yeah. I'm standing in, since then, standing in front of the fruit and vegetable section, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm a vegetarian. Yes. And I'm waiting there for somebody to come and help me pick up because in India, you are not allowed to touch the fruit and oh, vegetation. Yeah, yeah. The true. vendor will do that for you. Yeah. He doesn't trust you. Mm -hmm. Then somebody came who must be a, you know, another customer there, customer, yeah. and she said, you can pick it up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she okay. knew I'm a foreigner. Yeah. Interesting, right? Uh, my wedding, the same thing. We got married in Pittsburgh in 1962. Okay. And at the wedding, we have to have fire. Indian weddings require. Yes. There's in a very famous chapel, Heinz Chapel. And the church objected. We cannot have fire inside. inside yeah. Fire marshal won't allow that thing. Mm -hmm. So regular fire that we have to have for Indian wedding. Instead, I had a charcoal grill. Charcoal grill. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. You yeah, improvise, it's different. right? Yeah, improvise. But it's, those are memorable things. Yeah. There are events that say, yes, it can be done. It can be done, yeah. You know, it's yes. different. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Indians are very improvising. We can yes. improvise anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's 
Mm-hmm. Not improvisation stories. Yes. By the way, that's true in the classroom also. You meet all kinds of students, you talk to them, executives that you teach, you Mm. you learn so many things from them and you impact them in a way, many of them are memorable. Yeah, very true. Uh, So, along with those lines, aside from the work life, how are you, you know, you've done so much writing books, you know, it takes a lot of time to write a book, doing articles. So, a lot of teen, a lot of times, especially in modern days, people are having trouble balancing, okay, family time, you know, work life. So, how are you able to do that, if you were to that? The secret of that one is getting a great spouse. Ultimately, spouses are your backbone. And they take responsibility and free up your time. Mm -hmm. And that was clearly the case in my case. Mm -hmm. My wife Madhu decided she would be a homemaker rather than a career of her own. Mm -hmm. She was a school teacher before marriage. Yes. And uh, she felt that was necessary for raising kids properly. Okay. And so I had more time to travel, for example, mm-hmm. rather than stay. Uh, the other way I learned over time that generally we as humans are quite inefficient. Yes. We allow a lot of time to pass by. To pass by. Yeah. There's no outcome-based you know, activity. Yes. It's just there. So you begin to learn how to optimize that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I found that the best way to optimize for me was compartmentalize. Mm-hmm. This is the time and the place where I teach. This is the time and the place where I research, for example. Okay. So you're doing parallel work by dividing your week. So again, having the habits. Part I mean, of precise. Yeah. Yeah, r- routinization. Mm-hmm. You know, people say, uh, get a life. And I say, my best life is a boring life, you know. <laughs> Why not? And you know, a boring can be pleasure if yeah. it's routinized well. Mm-hmm. So I think that has helped me a lot. Okay. I had a weakness at one time because uh, when I came and asked one of my senior colleagues, mm-hmm. I used to postpone things till deadline. Deadline, okay. He never did that. He said any anytime anything he had to do, Just he immediately did it. Yes. Rather than wait for the deadline. Mm-hmm. And every time I waited for the deadline and did it, I missed the deadline. Missed it. So I have learned myself to make sure that I do it as and when, like just in time principle yeah. in manufacturing. And the last thing I learned was that there is no perfect answer for anything. Yes. There is no conclusive evidence, even in physics we don't know the galaxies properly. Mm-hmm. We are true. discovering new galaxies. Day, yes. but dating the human evolution, right? Mm-hmm. In here, biological evolution, you know, yeah. uh, we don't know. Everything we are dating back and back as to when yes. we began as humans. Uh, there is a lot of discovery about dinosaurs that we did not know. Did not know yes. So knowledge is not as invariant or unchanging, it is dynamic. Mm-hmm. And in fact, uh, knowledge is uh, depreciating of the knowledge is now, half-life of knowledge as it is called, is reducing. Yes. In software it is like less than three years. Okay. So what happens is that in the process you have to constantly learn and there is no perfect answer. Yes. So I use a model that says if it is 90% accurate, 95, I'm okay. You're okay with that, yeah. So I become more productive in the process. Yeah, because you're okay with what you yeah. have. Okay. The marginal cost of extra time and effort mm-hmm. versus what you rediscover or add thing doesn't make any difference. Yes, okay. Uh, my last question, Dr. Yes. Shade, is, you know, you having so much experience, yeah. living through several decades, for people like me, people in the upcoming generation, is there any specific advice you would give to them that you would advise them in, you know, in their journey? I envy your generation. I wish I was born now and be a high school or a college student. Mm-hmm. Today you have choices that we did not have. Yes. In many ways we lived with constraints. Mm-hmm. Here you are living with opportunities. Yes, very true. Problem with opportunities is worse than problem with choice or constraints. Yes. Constraints are well defined, opportunities are not. Mm-hmm. It's anything you want anything to be. Anything you want, that's a big decision there. Anything you want to be can be a midlife crisis then. You don't know what you yeah. want to be, you see. So I think in many ways, in a world of more opportunities and options, and no societal pressures that you have to be an engineer or a medical doctor, yes. for example, as it was true in India, mm-hmm. those choices, again, how do you exercise the choice right? It's key thing. So my main advice is that I think we, as high school students, really need to say, what, are, what am I passionate about? Mm-hmm. Whether it creates a livelihood or not, yes. 
maybe not the primary reason because sometimes we end up choosing a college major or go ultimately to some occupation yeah. and we don't like it to change it yeah. change it mm -hmm. and then it's much harder to change much later yeah, on so, so discovering your passion early, early yes. during high school mm -hmm. and preparing yourself to go to college with some sort of a career where you are passionate about that, mm -hmm. whether it's money making or not, mm -hmm. would be very key. Okay. That's clearly one advice. Yes. My second advice is that unfortunately, now this is remember somebody who is a grandfather age, mm -hmm. so it may be a biased advice, but is that today the social media has too much influence. Yes, that's very true. And there is no self there is no regulation other than self regulation. Yes. So how do you constrain yourself about how much social media will consume you? Mm -hmm. You are not consuming social media, yeah, yeah. social media consumes you. Yes. And therefore, how do you manage that properly? Yeah, it's important. It's, it's very important. Yeah. It, it's very addictive. Yes, very addictive. I tell you, to me, in my research, I find a digital addiction is as strong as gambling is an addiction, mm -hmm. for example. Yes. And of course, phys phys physiologically, Alcohol is an addiction. Mm -hmm. Once you then you can't control. Yes, it's hard. Um, South Korea is very addicted already. Okay. Japan is almost there, mm -hmm. but the biggest addiction of digital technology is now is in China. China. It's fascinating that people go to a cyber cafe because they don't have computers at home. Yes. They do cell phones, but not the main computers like you know laptop. Mm -hmm. So they go to cyber cafe and they compete on these games. Games, yes. Most addictive thing is the games, competitive games you know, yeah. that we have. Uh, yes. uh, and uh, and they play the game like six hours at a time. Hours. They forget their biological needs, hunger. So quite a few people go there and wear diapers. And they will yeah. pee in the diapers. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, right? Yeah, that's interesting. China it's government is so worried about this new generation from this digital addiction. Mm -hmm that they even have a detoxification centers built next to the cyber cafes. So to me, opportunities has its own advantages, yes. but there are several things which ultimately says that how can you have a self-regulation? Mm -hmm. Being able to control yourself. Parents will not be able to help you because you will not listen to the parents from you, right? At this age, yeah, none of us did. It's, it's okay. Uh, social circles. So. My way is self-regulation is very important, which means you've got to have an inner strength and inner confidence inner strength, yes. to say no. So no. More job, more opportunities, the main thing you have to learn is how to say no, mm -hmm. another thing, rather than saying yes. I think the second major area is the friends you keep shapes who you are. Yeah, they influence you. Influence, exactly. So you have to, media is clearly one, but the other one is your friend circle because ultimately you are all driven by the same viewpoints. Yes. You know, whether it's friendship is school children friends you know through the school system mm -hmm. neighborhoods as friends for example yeah. or faith as a place where you have friendships created yes. whatever mechanism you have mm -hmm. or family like cousins you know whatever yeah. it is i think i think the friends you keep also is very key for you to understand yeah uh, whereas we say wrong company versus right company in yes ways. last point is that i think we have made your generation too workaholic too workaholic you have no time to do anything. Just mm -hmm. simply say, I want to relax. Yeah, there's not much time for that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you are depriving sleep all the time. Mm -hmm. yes. The banking as if you'll catch up in the future. There is no future yeah. for yeah. sleep deprivation. Yeah. So you have to somehow figure out how do you chill off from activities. Mm -hmm. Do nothing, maybe a great activity actually. Yeah. And I'm trying to tell my grandchildren you don't have to be engaged every second, every minute of the way. Mm -hmm. Just think. Just relax. Just relax or read a book and imagine the characters. Mm -hmm. I find that in a YouTube generation, the visualization is done by somebody else. Yes. So we are very passive recipients. But if, when you read a novel, let's say. You have to picture uh, yourself. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, you Harry Potter movie, Harry Potter, or, yes. or, or, I mean, novel. Mm -hmm. You are imagining the character. Yes. You shape the character, the color, the dress, everything, the way you like it, mm -hmm. which is a great way of developing the brain. That's true. So from middle school, or just just pre-puberty time period, mm -hmm. 
it's very important to have a reading habit. Reading habits, yes. And then imagining the characters, making them visual and live in your mind is yeah. very important. Reading something that's kind of going away. Correct. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I just want to thank you for your time. Sure. And I appreciate all your responses. And I've enjoyed it. And I want to congratulate you on the award you received recently. Okay. So, yeah. I've enjoyed the interview. Thank you. Thank you.